Hello everyone, warm greetings from Uhaibora, Africa and welcome to Born for Greatness YouTube channel. It's lovely to connect with you once more in our second video where we now dive into the social-emotional learning process of our children. In this video, we will cover two of the seven critical social-emotional learning opportunities for babies in the womb. Be sure to hit the red button below and subscribe in order to benefit from all our social emotional learning videos for children from conception to the age of 18 years. Remember the videos will be uploaded every two weeks. In this first stage of life, science in the recent past has proved that babies learn a lot in the womb. The prenatal stage is therefore a golden opportunity for parents to maximize the socio-emotional learning of their unborn children. Allow me please to pause here and convey my hearty congratulations to every expectant mother in the house. Did you know that every pregnancy is a miracle? Here's the reason why. Research indicates that about 60% of natural conceptions never become properly implanted in the uterus, which sadly ends their life even before the mother realizes she's pregnant. So, your retro one is truly precious. I'm glad you made the choice to join us. Your decision to participate in this dialogue is an indication of your belief that every child was born for greatness and we all have an obligation to make it happen. So make sure you stay on to the end and explore with us practical strategies that facilitate each child's social emotional development to kick off with the best start ever. The amazing life of all our babies start at conception. In the first three months of their life, they grow with incredible speed from a bunch of cells to a fetus with the brain and other body organs already distinctly formed. They continue to achieve progressive developmental milestones physically, cognitively, and socio-emotionally until they are ready to leave the comfort of their mother's womb and enter the world at the end of the nine months. Now, let's unveil the seven great socio-emotional learning opportunities and discover how we can exploit them to optimize learning for our precious ones in the womb. The first one is a secure, loving, and nurturing relationship between baby and mom. It is scientifically proven that socio-emotional development in children is grounded on the quality of the relationship they have with their primary caregiver. This is well demonstrated by Bowlby and Ainsworth who are proponents of attachment theories, they indicated that babies who receive love, care, and nurturance from their mothers learn to trust and board with their mothers. They further claimed that through this secure and loving relationship with their mothers, babies learn the foundational socio-emotional competencies of love, trust and attachment, which are the basis of their future relationship with others. Current studies point out that the learning process of these fundamental socio-emotional competencies starts in the womb. That said, it is crucial that a secure, loving and nurturing relationship with baby sparks off the moment mom discovers she is pregnant. And guess what? Her unborn baby is already heads over heels in love with her because babies have a natural instinct to love their moms as their life wholly depends on them. At this juncture, we would love to hear from you how you connected with your unborn baby. Please feel free to share your experiences in the comment section below. Now, most mothers to be have been known to automatically reciprocate baby's love. However, there is a good number that may hold in different thoughts, feelings, and attitude towards their unborn baby as a result of 
varied reasons. Unfortunately, if they are not able to work through the underlying issues, this indifference results into baby developing an insecure relationship with their mother. Recent studies show that unborn babies do perceive their mother's distress or hostility in her environment through her body and it impacts negatively on baby's socio-emotional development. In addition, research has also associated mother's indifference to their unborn baby with postpartum depression, a situation that pushes the mother to distance herself emotionally from their child once they are born, which has a negative impact on baby's socio-emotional development. With that in mind, let's reflect on two ways through which maternal distress negatively impacts the unborn baby's socio-emotional development. The first one is that uh, toxic stress has been scientifically shown to negatively impact on an unborn baby's brain development as early as the 17th week of pregnancy. It hinders proper brain development of neurons that our, our babies need to transmit socio-emotional messages from the body to the frontal part of the brain. For example, when a mother or father lovingly strokes the baby bum, neurons transmit this communication of love to baby's brain where it is interpreted as a loving and caring gesture. Babies therefore learn from this uh, gesture that they are loved and they can trust their present and future environments. So when neurons are not properly developed because of maternal stress, baby's socio-emotional learning process is hampered. The second one is that mom's Toxic stress results into the production of excess stress hormone known as cortisol in her body. The cortisol hormone infiltrates into the unborn baby system through the placenta, ladling the baby vulnerable to mom's distress and emotional reaction. Studies done recently on the impact of maternal stress on the fetus indicate that unborn babies get stressed and they may experience or manifest this with an elevated heartbeat or decreased movement in the womb, among other emotional reactions. The critical learning here is that the stressed unborn baby receives cues from their stressed mom that they are not safe they learn that their future environment is not welcoming. This may make them to be overly sensitive towards stressful situations in future. Other researchers also indicate that unprocessed maternal stress may predispose the baby to cardiovascular and psychiatric illnesses later in their life. However, the wonderful news is that the above situation can be mitigated. The impact of maternal stress on baby's wellness, both before and after birth, depends on mom's ability to deal or cope with her stress. This fact points to a very important responsibility for every mom and indeed all dads too. It is none other than self-care. The wholesome or integrated well-being of moms and dads is the prerequisite for establishing a, and sustaining a secure, loving, and nurturing relationship with their baby. That said, it would be very helpful for any distressed mom or dad to reach out for support. Sometimes just talking to a trusted person in your life may help one to gain clarity into the issues they are facing and identify workable solutions. Other situations though may warrant uh, professional support 
such as psychosocial or counseling services from credible service providers. In Kenya, several government agencies do provide online support, for instance, the Child Helpline Toll Free Line 116 and the Gender Based Violence Hotline 1195. It is important that I underscore that the experiences, the feelings, the thoughts that any expectant mom or dad may be going through do not define them. That is, they do not diminish your worth or dignity as a human being. Hence, the need to reach out for support to secure both your wellness and that of your baby. I'm sure you will agree with me that our proactiveness in ensuring holistic wellness of both parents-to-be and the unborn baby is crucial. So here are a few tips that we could use to keep distress at bay. Number one, choose to be a positive thinker and be sure to shut out any intrusive negative thoughts Remember, our thoughts shape our behaviors and relationships. Number two, strive to lead a balanced life with ample time to rest and refresh. Number three, enjoy quality me time and engage in activities that you enjoy or love. Number four, adhere to a non strenuous exercise routine such as brisk walking, swimming, dancing, simple aerobics, to name a few. And please consult your health or physical fitness advisor where possible. Number five, establish and nurture a secure, loving, and nurturing relationship with your baby. And it will be great if this is fostered even before the baby is conceived. Number six, Seek and accept support to deal with stressful issues in your life. Number seven, eat a balanced and nutritious diet. Again, this would be great if started before conception. Keep off any harmful substances that may harm your unborn child. And this may include alcohol, cigarettes, and harmful drugs, uh, just to name a few. Number eight, attend all your antenatal clinics faith-free. Number nine, maintain a supportive social network, for example, with family members and friends. When an expectant mom takes care of her well-being and experiences love and support from her partner and her social network, she produces the happy hormone called dopamine which infiltrates a baby's system through the placenta. The baby is therefore happy when mom is happy and sad when mom is sad. To every mom and dad listening, let's choose happiness for ourselves and our babies. It is a priceless investment in their sound social-emotional development. The second social-emotional learning opportunity that we are going to explore is that um, expectant parents need to provide an enabling environment for fundamental development of their baby's brain. We have already explored how a mother's emotional state impacts on her baby's, develop baby's brain development. Let us now examine the critical role that the brain plays in the socio-emotional development of our children. It is important to mention that virtually all human body functions are controlled by the brain. However, uh, in this uh, video, we will zero in on brain function in the socio-emotional development of our children. The frontal part of the brain controls our socio-emotional development, which comprise our personality, our emotions, concentration, initiation, behavior, 
problem solving, planning and judgment. Evidently, the brain is therefore central to the sound social development of our babies. That said, how then do we ensure our baby's optimal brain development takes place? During the first trim trimester, and indeed throughout the pregnancy period, science tells us that human brain develops with supersonic speed. Every expectant mom therefore needs to support optimal brain development of their unborn child. Now, one way to make this happen is consumption of an adequate and nutritious diet. This diet should include foods known to promote good brain health. And I will briefly go through 12 examples of uh, such foods. Number one, foods rich in healthy fats like omega-3, for instance, fatty fish, which include uh, Nile pash, sardines, salmons, and omena. Number two, green leafy vegetables like broccoli and spinach, which are rich in vitamin C, vitamin A, calcium, iron, and folic acid. The iron helps in the transfer of oxygen to baby's brain. Number three, seeds and nuts such as almonds, which are packed with essential vitamins and minerals such as vitamin B, E, and zinc, which aid in the development of baby's neurological system. Number four, eggs which are rich in proteins and choline choline is a major component of cell membrane and supports development of the parts of baby's brain that control memory number five lean meat rich in zinc and iron and dairy products like milk which are rich in vitamin d and essential for brain health and improves cognitive uh, function and memory. We also have blueberries and other bellies which are rich in antioxidants that promote cognitive development. Number seven, avocados, which have healthy fats and antioxidants and other fruits like pawpaw, which are rich in folic acid and also antioxidants. Beans are packed with zinc, protein, iron, folate, and choline, all very essential in the health, healthy development of baby's brain. Number nine, whole grains um, rich in folic acid and iron. Number 10, Pumpkin seeds, which are packed with essential minerals such as magnesium, copper, iron, and zinc. Uh, these are all important for baby's brain health. Number 11, dried fruits, for example, prunes and apricots. Uh, these are rich in vitamin B complex, which supports signaling molecules of the brain. Number 12, dark chocolate, yes, which improves... Uh, baby's blood flow sub subsequently um, transferring adequate oxygen to the brain. As mentioned above, any substance that can cause harm to baby's uh, brain, such as alcohol, cigarettes, and harmful drugs should be avoided at all costs because they can damage your, the brain and cause developmental and learning difficulties when baby is born. Thank you for your valuable participation. Remember to share your comments with us and other uh, participants. We look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will explore how we can exploit baby's five senses to maximize their brain development and social emotional learning. Continue to be a pillar of support to children allowed you and see you soon.